Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Peter. Today we are going to finish off the second part of our IP address tracker. So if this is your first time coming here or seeing this project, uh, please go back to the part one and watch that so that you can be able to follow along with us. So there'll be a link, there will be a link to the part one in the top uh, kind of this video and also in the video description. Uh, and for this video so please watch that then come back to this part and let's finish it up so today we are going to finish implementation of the map and also the functionality for this ip address tracking project let's go straight to the video all right then so now we have the uh, let me restart the server yarn dev dash dash port 3000 so let's restart the server. All right. So now let's go back to let's go back to building the map. Go to React Reflect page. Let's look at what we have to do. So just straight up here. I already see what we need to do. We need to have a position which the map would zoom into. So we can pass it like this, number and number, and then we we'll pass it to uh, we have a map container, we have a marker, and then we have a pop-up that we could just uh, pass this data. So what I'm going to do is, in our map, I'm just going to copy this particular thing, only this one here, and put it there. Then I'll, I'll come back. So the results from what they have is this kind of stuff I'm seeing here. I don't even need to, but we could just go to get started, but this is what I need here. So let me not, uh, uh, let's not take our time. So let's get back here. So we are done with the CSS here. Let's close this page. Let's go to the map page. So I'm going to re return the map container. And then let me just copy the position that they have even though I will not be using that later. So um, let's go, let's go here. So I just paste this here. All right. So let's import map container. Did you get it? Map container, let's import tile layer. Oh, no, not at all. Let me just type it here. So I have tile layer. We have marker, we have pop up. Uh, yeah, I think that should be all. It's complaining about center. What's it saying? All right, then. So, uh, why is this complaining? I think we have to pass a type here. So, I'm going to say that the type is number, number. Yeah, okay, so that is that. All right, so with this now, um, we need to render our map. And we're rendering the map here, here. So let's import, let's get the map. Let's import the map here. So we say import map from dot dot slash map. So we are going out to the component folder. So where do we want to render the map? We want to render the map here. See map. So if I save now, let's take a look if we have a map. Oh no. Okay. Um we need to do some stuff for this to work. We have to import the leaflet CSS. If not, and then we have to give some styling to the map so that it shows well. So let's go back to the map folder. Just go to the top here and import leaflet import leaflet slash dist slash leaflet dot css so this is what we need and then we also need to give the map a styling so i'm going to use an inline style i'm sorry style which is simply i'm going to say that it has a 
uh, what's we call a width of 100 vertical width and a height a comma height of 100 them 100 vertical height let me actually give it a z index right now z index of it so if i save now let's take a look again um i kind of not seeing anything right now and then let me refresh let's see okay so now our map has been loaded so we needed to start that and then we have our marker here but um if you look at the finished design we have this custom marker from frontend mentor so let's create a custom marker so how do we even add a custom marker to think uh let me go to index.css and let's add a single line to remove this uh horizontal there is this horizontal scrolling here that keeps popping up let's remove that line. so let's go to index.css and just go to the body and let's add overflow x and let's see hidden all right so that that takes care of that so now let's add the cost let's customize the, uh, the marker so how do we customize marker i'll close this and go back to our map to customize the marker we need to use uh leaflet at this point so let's import leaflet so i'm going to say import all everything as l from leaflet so we are importing everything from leaflet so um let's also use the custom marker from here so if you look at this play we have icon location.svg that is the custom marker we're going to use so let me come here and import that i'm going to say import i'm going to call it custom marker from total slash as no, sorry assets slash oh doesn't show me icon dash location dot svg so that is the custom marker there i mean leave this alone like this so what do we want to do now that we have imported uh this let's go to here after this position or should we do it before let's do it before so let's say const custom marker now not is it custom marker yet? Well, custom icon okay so what do we want to do custom icon we're going to say new l which is an instance of react um, leaflet itself so dot icon and we're going to pass in some properties i'm going to say icon url and we are going to say it is custom marker and then we are going to say icon retina url i'm also going to pass in custom marker and then we are going to have pop-up anchor and we want it to be at negative zero negative zero and then finally we'll have icon size so what do we want to use as the icon size we're going to say 32 by 45 all right so now that we have this how do we now pass it to our, our marker so we go here to marker marker now we are going to see icon and then we'll pass our custom icon so this is how we pass uh we create custom icon with react leaflet so if we're to okay so if we are to check back now we now have our custom icon so if you want to create a custom icon with uh marker i i mean with real leaflet so that is how we do it so there's something that happens with uh leaflet js which is that if um if this map here once it has been set this container has been set even if what we want to display the latitude and the longitude or the position changes it is not going to change here it is the, this map container is immutable so for us to be able to change this for us to be let's say when you first come to the platform we have 
your location and we display that we set it now when you now search for a different ip address we need to be able to also set that place on the map but if we just pass those data to to leaflet it's not going to do that because it is immutable so we need to add a function to help us do the changing so let's quickly add that to the map so now let's go to the map how do we do this changing let's call it const change map view change map view so this is going to help us to change the map view we are going to accept coordinates so let's destructure that and let's give it a type so the type of coordinate is going to be chords and it's going to have um number and number just like we did for uh the other uh, upper booth for the position we to have number a number so so in, able to, in order to be able to do this we will need to import a function from react leaflets we are going to this function is called use map so we import the use map function um, let's go back here so i'm going to say here in this chain map view function I'm going to initialize the map. So we say const map is equals to oh sorry is equals to use map. So we have an initialization here. I'm going to say map dot set view map dot set view to the coordinates that we pass, and then also we want to say map dot get zoom. So and then we'll call this and then we'll just return map. To return null. So in this way, whenever the map change and we pass in those coordinates, it's going to force the map to set to that uh, the current whatever we have passed to it. So to use this, we'll go back to to our chain map view. I'm sorry, to our map container, and then we'll pass in chain map view as a component. We also need to pass the coordinate to it. And then let's just pass for now, let us pass position. But later on, we'll would change that to oh, okay and then close it to what we need. So, with this now, whenever our map changes, we are able to go to, to see that new thing that's, that we now have. We already have everything set in place to use the map and also. To now finally let me even take a look at what we have yeah I think we have everything is set in place so what we now need to do is to just connect here and then have our API with us okay uh, we installed react icons let's add an icon here I forgot that so let's go to react icons and let's search for an icon let's search for react I'm oh, sorry arrow not react arrow right just going to pick anyone. So let's just pick this one. It looks a bit uh, small, but let's just pick that one. So let's go back to here, and then I think we have here. So let's add this. Okay, and let's import that. Let's make sure to import that. Okay, it doesn't suggest anything. Um, I like to have my import at the top. So let's import. I'm going to see. Um, import that from react icons slash md so so we have that now let's take a look okay so finally it's here so i can close this guy up can also close this guy up all right then so the next thing we need now is to be able to search and then uh why not let, let's get immediately somebody comes to our page let's first of all get the location and then we'll now do the the searching parts or anyone i don't even know which one to do first but let's let's start with something all right so um let's go to app.tsx or let's create let's create a simple hook let's create a simple hook that will do this job for us so let's go to source and create a folder called hooks and then let's create a hook that's going to be called use ip use ip dot 
TSX. So we are going to say export const use IP. So we are going to create this. Okay, so um I'm going to have a function actually that is going to do the creating for so I'm going to say const get IP data is equals to let's use callback so that we can um memorize this particular particular function um then it's going to be asynchronous and then it's going to accept a key or let's call it ip then it's going to be optional so i'll, I'll come back to why it's going to be an optional optional so um what else here okay and then we'll pass in an empty let's import uh, this callback so import use callback from React. Okay, so um, the reason why we are passing on, we are going to make this IP optional is that when somebody initially comes to the page, we don't know their IP address. So we would just automatically search for that. But once but they cannot, once they search, we, we are able to pass uh, an IP. So we don't want to create two functions to do that. One function will be enough to do that for us. All right, so let's kind of formulate how our data is going to look like. So let's go to the source and create a folder called at types. And here, let's create another one called, let's call it map.d.ts. So this is where we'll have uh, our map types so what kind of data are we going to have in uh, here so let's create an interface export interface let's call it ip data so we'll have it we'll be having longitude longitude and uh, it's going to be a number we'll be having latitude which is also going to be a number in country we're also going to be a string. So this is the data we're accepting. Let us quickly uh, create another one for our map as for the interface IMAP. So this is what our map will be accepting because our map at the end of the day is going to be a functional component. So let's just pass this here. So before we leave this space, why not just let's create the one for the home? Let us say home.b.ts. Because home also is going to accept uh, some other stuff so export interface um i home let's call it i home i guess so uh, we are going to accept a query and we are going to accept a set query the react state and this is going to be of type react dot dispatch um dispatch react dot set state actions and the set action is going to be a string because this is just going to be a string so that is the type and then we also are going to pass a function that will handle searching for query and it's just going to be a function that accepts a let's just call it whatever the user type so key is going to be a string and it's going to return void then whatever it's going to return and then we also have data and then data is going to have is just going to be ip data so let's just import the one from um map so we are using this uh interface here in this place too so these are the uh what we pass into our home component so once we turn it into a functional component it's uh not functional component when we just pass in the, the props and the types is going to like start screaming at us that we need to provide these things so let's get back here to our hook so this is our hook and our hook is going to have a return type of promise and it's either going to return ip data or it will return void because we might have void coming back so let's get back to business yeah so what do we want to do to get our ip address we have two particular um 
APIs that we're going to use. So let's take a look. So this is the API that I'll be using. Now this API was supposed to come back with latitude and longitude, but unfortunately it wasn't coming back. And that was that is why we now need to use this extra package. We just need this package just to give us time uh, latitude and longitude. So many of the things that this particular one does, this other one does, uh, we just we're just using this to follow what was stated in the challenge. Now uh, for this particular one here, like I said, we just need this latitude and longitude here, which to us, to me right now, is not really that accurate what they have here, but um, it's <laughs> like that sometimes. All right then. So um, to just click on sign up here, and then you get our 1,000 free API credits. So uh, fill this information and sign up. I think I already have an account. I'm going to click on login and I okay. I hope it's correct. Okay, so it is correct. Now you simply see how we formulate data here. So you just come here, you have your API key. This is your API key here. So you can copy that out, but let's register for this other one first before. We do that. So now let's go here. What we have to do is simply click on sign up too. So you click on sign up. Then you can sign up with Google, sign up with GitHub, or you can just do the classic sign up. So I think I signed up with one of these guys here. So once you're done with that, and then you can just, I think you'll be signed in. So I'll just go and sign in right now. So let's try it up. All right then, so I have my API key here already. I have my API key, so I can just click, and I can just click here to generate or reset this. So don't, but don't worry about this uh, API key here. All right then, so click on this to copy your API key, and let's go to, let's go to here, outside of the source folder, create a file, let's call it .env. So, to store an environment variable in Vite, you say Vite, then you give it the name. So I'm going to say underscore, I think, IPGO, underscore API, underscore key, is equal to this one here. So let me go and copy my API key from the second one. So this one here, I'll say, that's API key, and I'm just going to say IPIF or something. So Vite, underscore IP FY underscore API underscore key is equal to this. So with this now we have stored our API key. So let's go and create our function. Now let me quickly add a try catch block here. Uh, what we're just going to simply do is if we have an error we'll just console the log the error. For that's what we just do. I'm not doing anything with the error. So in the catch block group, we have to form URL. So let's call this the first API. Now, one thing we should know is that if we don't have any IP address, we can always get the IP for of the client. So we see, let's form the URL. So it's a const URL is equals to. So if we have an IP, we have a URL we want to use. If we do not have an IP, we have another URL. So for this first, so let's go to the first one. So let's go here and let's just copy, copy to this here. Or just let's just copy everything here. Actually, let's just copy everything. Or just click on copy. So let's copy this. So if we have a URL, I'm going to change it to template uh, string. If you have an IP, and then if we don't have an IP, so we'll come in, we'll formulate this as quick as possible. All right, now, first of all, if we have an IP address, then we don't want to, uh, if I have an IP address, we want to pass the IP here, in this last place. So we'll just say, we'll pass the IP coming from it. Now, we want to replace our API key with, 
with um, the one from env. So to 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 read a key from environment variable in env, we say instead of process dot env, you must use the same process dot env. In the case of fit, you say import dot meta dot env dot the name. So our name is fit underscore ipi y underscore api underscore key. So that is for if we have uh, an IP address. So let me replace this one too here so that my, my API key is gone. Now, if you don't have an IP address, we simply don't pass any IP. So we'll just remove this line here. So this is what we are going to do. So with this now, we don't care anything that is going on. So we are going to use fetch API to to you to do it. So um, you know, so let's create something here. Const response is equal to await fetch and I will pass URL. Now one other thing we need to do is we also need to say await and then await.json. So this is how we we'll get the data. So um if you feel like oh what's this? Um this is just the same thing as saying const res equals to await fetch C URL and then you say const let's say D equals to res um await res.json. So um this two line of code here is equivalent to this one here. So what I simply doing is that when this code run, it first waits for this one to happen. Then once it gets uh, this readable really, uh, really stream back, we then wait for this to be converted to JSON. So that is what we are doing. So you can write yours like this. I will just have this one like this. So once we get back the data, if you look at what we have in the response, uh, let's take a look. So having something like IP, location, inside location, we have country, region, time zone, domains, and all that. Now, with this information, we already know how the data is going to come. The same thing for this one. So if I go to documentation and I go to IP geolocation. So if you look at how the data is going to come back, it's pretty much not really nested. It's coming back like this. The last two are not nested, are not nested and that is the only thing that we want to pick from here. So uh, let's go back to here. Let's go back to page. So we have this data back. Now we need to use the IP from here. So we'll pass it to the second uh, API. So let's formulate URL for the second API. So say cons, let's call it geolocation. Let's say geolocation URL or URL. So we also have to say if we have um, <coughs> For the geolocation URL, we're also going to do this. Um, I think we don't even need to do any if we have an IP because obviously by the time you get to this point, we already have an IP. Whether it is searched by the user or it is just gotten automatically by the client. So we are just going to do is simply say, um, let's go to the documentation and grab the URL. So I think the URL is down here. And so we'll just pass this, and then we need to provide an API key by just saying API key. Uh, I think so. Yeah, so just API key. So to provide an API key again, you just say import dot meta dot env dot vite underscore what do we call this one? IPGO underscore uh, API API underscore key. So, what else do we need to pass here? And we need to pass an IP. So we are going to say and IP is equals to. We are not going to use the IP that will come back from here. So we say response dot IP response dot IP. So I'm using optional chaining 
so that in case anything goes wrong, it doesn't start screaming, cannot read IP or phone defined. So that is this. So we now have our two uh, stuff. We'll next now say console result. Let's fetch it equals our width, our width, fetch geolocation URL. You got in spell that correct. The location URL, let me spell it. Dot JSON. So we now have these two. Oh, sorry. Equal to. We now have these two uh, data available for us. And we then have to combine them into to form our response. So it calls response object is equal to. Oh, sorry. It's an object. It's an array. So the longitude that we need is going to come from result um, result dot optional chain, you don't forget that result dot longitude the latitude that we need is also going to come from result dot latitude. Then the rest of the data, let's say time zone, I know we need time zone, is going to come from response dot time zone. Yeah, that's what the time zone. The IP that we need is going to come from response dot IP. The country is going to come to response the location dot IP. I'm sorry, country. Uh, what else do we need? The region. We need to come from response dot location dot region. And then, what else do we need? The ISP. ISP. We need to come from response dot. I think that one should be. I speed. I think that's all we need. And then at this point, we'll say return response object. Now we have to return something back from the hook, which is just return get IP data. So this hook provides this particular function here that then sends back this data when it is successful. So our hook has been completed. We just need to consume it now. Let's go to app.tsx. So now we are going to use this uh, use state in app.tsx to to use this. So we are going to see. First, let's first of all create the searching state. Uh, I'll just call it query and search query. I already gave it that name in the type. Also use state. It's going to be a string, so we'll pass it in. Then we say const data, sorry, data and set data. So this is going to be the one to contain all the information that come back. Use state, it's going to be of type IP data, so it's going to be of type IP data, which is going to have time zone as a string. Oh, sorry, I want to type string. I'll look uh, no location country it's going to be a string which is going to be a string uh, what else is missing an IP which is also going to be a string I think that's all we need so now we have this what do we want to do so I'm going to use use effects immediately somebody comes to the page so we say use effect and then we just want it to run once, so we pass an empty dependency array. So what are we going to do? Let's create a function. We say async function. Let's call it init. Because initially, it doesn't take any parameter. And it's going to say const response equals to await. Now we need to import the hook and use the hook here. So I'm going to say const get IP data is equals to use IP 
So we are importing the use IP hook. So let me just pull this, these two things up above the CSS. I like to have them above the CSS. Okay. So let's use this hook now. So I will get IP. Remember it's an asynchronous function. We don't pass anything to it. So whatever the response it gives us, we are going to see if response contains IP. So we know it's successful. Then we want to set data to response. So if it's successful, we want you to do that. Then we're also going to call the function here. So we say init. So we call the function. So immediately the page loads. What we do, we then call this function. Without with this, we call the hook here without passing any IP. So when it comes here, it looks, is there an IP? No. So he executes this particular one against the information and then he passes it, the IP that he gets to this guy to get us the location and then we return the response having all these fields. So that's what we have. Now, one other thing we need to know is that we need to pass this information to home. So let's go back to the home and make it to have. So remember what the home has. It has all this part. So let's go back here and let's say that home is a function um, FC and we need to pass, it's going to be IP, um, I think I home. That is the type that it's going to have. So let's import FC from React here. Import FC functional component for React. So it's of type functional component. So we have imported that now and it's already screaming here that okay we need to pass some props here so let's pass some props let's get the props we need we need data we need query we need set query and we need handle query so you can see how autocomplete is doing its thing so we need to pass all these things here so what we're going to do is let's create props const props so i'm going to say what's this Oh, okay, we, need, we haven't declared handle query yet. So let me quickly create that one here. Const handle query is supposed to be a function and it's going to take a key, which is a string, like the search term, whatever the person, the user searches for. So what is it going to do? Let us have it like this for now. So what I'm going to do is that since we have this, instead of passing our function, our Parameters like uh, props like this data query. I will say post to query, but not an array. So instead of passing this data like this one by one, we could just pass everything at once by just doing uh, spreading this props, and that sticks your page. So it's equivalent to typing it one by one, but I prefer this, it makes it more cleaner. All right, so what we want this handle query to do? So this handle query is going to take the terms that whatever the user has typed and it's going to just do similar thing to what has happened here. So it's going to call the get IP data. Let's mark it as asynchronous. Call the get IP data and it's going to pass the IP, which is just key here. Or should I call it IP? Let's call it IP. Which is just the IP. So in this case, it passes that then if then the response is set that to response and then it also clears uh, the query to be empty. So currently the query, when the user searches, the query will have whatever user has typed. But if we get a response, we clear it. So that is what it does. Um, all right then, so I think we're almost done. We already have the function to handle searching. We already have this one to handle when the user comes up immediately to the um, to, to our platform. All right, so and we have passed that. So let's go back to home here. We now need to use that. So let's go back to our input. First, let's handle the form part of this whole thing. Let's handle the form. So what do we want to do for the form? We want the form to be. Um, let's create a function. Should we? Do we need a function to handle the form submission? Let's create a function. Say const on submit and submit. 
So we are going to have E. And E is going to be of type React dot form event and I'm oh, sorry what kind of form event is that it's going to be HTML form event oh sorry form element okay so and then what are we going to do here we're going to say e dot prevent default so we don't want the page to refresh and then we're just going to call the handle query and pass in query to it and that's all we do here. So let's go back to the form here and say on submit, and then we'll pass in the on submit function. So once you click on submit, that goes. And let's go to the input field and say that the value is query, and then on change. So if it, if the user start typing on change, we have e, and e is going to be of type react dot form event. And what kind of form event is going to be? It's going to be HTML, HTML input. Oh, sorry, not like this. Is it correct? No. HTML input element. And then what are we going to do? We're going to set query to be e dot current target dot value in your current target of value so with this now we are almost done we now have to deal with this by saying that this will be so we are ready with the, the whatever come back from the data we're going to say this is going to be data dot ip remember the optional chain to avoid error of uh cannot read this or find define So, currently we have this ready. Let's take a look at what we have on the page already. Working. Uh, it says UTC it doesn't provide anything, but the rest of them are working. It's already get my IP, get my location, get my SP. Let's look at why the time zone is not working, it's not correct. And then we'll add the map and we are done. So, let's go and find out why the one for time zone is not working. So, let's search first. Data of time zone. Let's look at our hook. Did we make any mistake? Okay, response dot time zone. Okay, um, are we making any mistake? Let me log the response to the console and let's see hook itself. So where is it? Okay, let's see console dot log response. Let's see from hook. So if I if I were to go back here and let's take a look at the console. Mm, components is changing, coming ISP. Oh okay, the time zone is inside the location so that is a mistake it's supposed to be response dot location dot time zone so that is the mistake so i think it's correct now yeah so it's correct now so now, the next thing we need to do let me search 8.8.8.8 if i hit enter it fetches the correct one. now what we just need to do is to pass this data the last one i to to the map we already created a type for our map. So if you look at our map, our map, our map just has a data that has all these fields. Even though we really don't need all these fields. We just need latitude and longitude. But I will leave it. You can remove it from yours. <laughs> I'll just leave it like that. So let's go back to the map. And let's make the map a functional component so that we can accept all this. Um, so we're going to see it needs IMAP. That's all it needs. And I have to put all this uh, above the CSS. And I also have to put this one up here. Okay, I need to import FC from React. To import, well, what's going on? FC, 
from React. All right, and then what do we need to do? We will not be able to assess data here. So we have data, and then we have to now change everything. Instead of position, we'll take away the position, and then we'll be passing. So we're passing like this, an array and say data dot latitude, and then data dot longitude. I'm oh, sorry, longitude. So I'm just going to copy this so that I can just use it in I paste here. Yeah, I think we are done. And then okay, I need one other thing. The pop-up I need to show. Let me show uh data dot region. Yeah, I need to I think we are done here. So let's take a look at our map, our uh, finished product. Oh, something is wrong. Okay, let's take a look at what might be wrong. Invalid lat long object. So that has to do with a uh, map. See? Invalid lat long object. Okay, it is undefined, undefined. Wow, undefined. Hmm. Really, it is undefined. Okay, <laughs> why is our latitude and longitude undefined? Oh, I have not passed any data here to map. I've not passed any data. So if you notice, why I call the map, I was supposed, I was supposed to pass the props data, but I didn't pass it. So let me pass it. It wasn't even highlighting it here, but I didn't notice. So let's pass data to be data, and I believe we should be fine. So let's go back, and we are definitely fine. So close up, please. So finally, we have our two working. So let's search for, I think I know only Google 8.8.8, .8 and I hit enter. And then it fetches out and it changes. Let's search. Let's. Uh, I think I wrote Facebook. I think I wrote Facebook. This is Facebook, yeah. All right. So let's paste this one, and let's hit search. Okay. So, uh, Facebook Inc. All right. So, uh, we are finally done with this. Um, everything is working fine. You can add maybe anything you want to add or change up some stuff which is um it's kind of welcomed um thank you very much for <laughs> staying with me this time i will be seeing you in the next video